Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, I'm gonna to talk about a question that a lot of people come to me with. And the question is, how on earth did I gain two pounds overnight? So we're gonna dive into nine reasons why the scale went up and stay tuned for the end because I have some great bonus tips that you are not gonna to wanna to miss. How would it feel to lose 40 pounds? Even when you're over 40, you are a smart woman, you know you need to move more and eat less, but why don't you do it? Or maybe you think you are doing all the things and still not seeing the results you want. If this is the case, you are in the right place. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. This podcast will teach you all about fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, your mindset. Plus, we have some special guests stop by to share their stories. Now on to today's show. All right, for all you ladies that grew up in the 80s and the 90s, and even the 70s, you probably were taught that the scale knows all and there couldn't possibly be any other reason why the scale has gone up other than you have gained fat. So times have changed and we now know that the scale doesn't tell the full story. So I'm gonna give you nine reasons why the scale isn't all knowing. All right, reason number one, the scale might've gone up. You had a salty meal. So sodium can take two to three days to get out of your system. So if you've been diving into pretzels and potato chips or some other areas that have some sneaky sodium in them or Chinese food or soy sauce, you're gonna need to like depuff. Reason number two, same idea, you may have had too much sugar. So sugar can also puff you up and it can also take a couple days for you to eliminate it through your system. Reason number three, you might be dehydrated. Are you drinking enough water? Probably not. Ideally, I tell my clients to drink between 90 and 128 ounces of water per day. More if you're consuming caffeine, salt, or sugar. Or if it's really hot outside or you are sweating profusely in a workout. Most women that I work with drink about 30 to 40 ounces a day when they first start with me. So again, 90 to 128 ounces. Yes, you can have too much water. It's called hypertremia, which also means water intoxication. Generally, it's related to an underlying condition like an inability to filtrate the water out fast enough. It is extremely rare. But here's a good rule of thumb, warning TMI coming up. If your urine is pale yellow, almost clear, then you're properly hydrated. Reason number four, a little more TMI. (laughs) You haven't done a number two. Your weight depends in part on when you last had a bowel movement. So you wanna make sure that you're eating enough fiber. And again, what I usually recommend is anywhere from 25 to 50 grams of fiber per day. Number five reason, sorry, more TMI. (laughs) It's that time of the month. I know from past experience, there has been times when I have had my period and I have gained six pounds during that time and I look like I'm three months pregnant. If you are going through perimenopause, which I know I am, um, our hormones are all over the place. You know, it could be 20 days, it could be 30 days, and then it could be 10 days. Your period can be very erratic and so can your weight. Reason number six. You could be intolerant to something that you ate. So dairy is a huge culprit and it's in everything. And it contains lactose, uh, which is a milk sugar that some people can't digest. And you can develop lactose intolerance later on in life. I know for me, when I was little, I used to drink milk like it was going out of style. Like my mom, we used to cringe because I'd come in from a hot August summer day and be like, can I have a glass of milk? (laughs) I think she thought it would curl in my stomach because I was so hot. But I used to drink a lot of milk and now I can't. I I just can't tolerate it anymore. And I am lactose intolerant. 
So if you're finding that you're feeling lethargic or bloated after eating um, certain foods, and one of them could be breads or pastas, you might want to consider whether you have issues digesting wheat or gluten. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have celiac disease, but it just could be that you're intolerant. So there's a big difference between being allergic to something and being intolerant. And there's many levels of intolerance. Like I know some people that can have a little bit of milk, but if they have like really heavy creamy milk, then they're really affected. So everybody's a little different, but Again, that doesn't mean you have celiac disease. It just means you need to be aware of what's going on and if you need to address it with the doctor. Reason number seven, you did an intense workout or went for a run, like a hard run. So when you work out, your body goes into an inflammation response because the whole idea of working out, which sounds horrible, is you are breaking down the muscle and you're stressing your nervous system. The good part about that is, is when you rebuild, you're gonna come back stronger. But through that process, you can swell and gain weight, scale weight we're talking. So if you have ever done a leg workout that left your legs super wobbly, and later on that day you tried to put on a pair of jeans that you knew fit you, and when you pull them on, you find that you can't even like get them up, your legs are just swollen they will depuff in a day or two. Reason number eight, the scale might have gone up. You could have gained muscle. Lean muscle weighs more than fat, and muscle takes up less space than body fat. Muscle is good. <laughs> so if you are doing a fat loss program and gaining strength, which you need to be doing, that scale number might go up, but your inches will go down. Keep in mind that initially, if you are starting a program like this, you may find that initially, before you start losing that extra body fat, you may feel even bigger. Then number nine, the scale went up. And I really hope you're listening because most women usually dive into the latest and so-called greatest diet, which I really hope you have not. But if you have completely cut out carbs, and you recently re-added them back in or even had one day where you had them, you're gonna be amazed at how quickly you will gain weight. What happens is when you take out carbs, carbs have water molecules with them in the molecular structure. So when you take them out, and I have a whole, um, I think I have a whole podcast. If not, I definitely have a blog on this. But when you take out the carbs, Initially, what you're seeing as the scale goes down is water weight because you're not eating those carbs. When you add those carbs back in, they pull in those water molecules, which make you gain water weight. So you could easily have gained three to five pounds in a day if you have cut out carbs and then reintroduced them. Okay, so here are my bonus tips. First of all, you need to burn 3,500 calories to equal one pound of fat. So unless you over ate 3,500 calories in one day on top of your daily caloric intake, you couldn't possibly have gained two pounds of fat overnight. Okay, so let me give you some numbers so this makes more sense. So if your daily caloric intake is 2,000 calories, and you eat an additional 3,500 calories, which is equal to one pound of fat, you would have to eat a total of 5,500 calories in one day in order to gain one pound of fat. So in order for you to have gained two pounds of fat overnight, remember 3,500 is one pound. So if we multiply that by two, that's 7,000. So in order to gain two pounds overnight, you would have had to have eaten 9,000 calories if your um, calorie intake, your daily calorie intake was 2,000. 9,000 calories. Do you know how much food that is? <laughs> That's crazy insane. There's no way you're eating 9,000 calories. My next bonus tip is your weight loss journey does not end in 12 weeks. It is lifelong. 
this is why I kind of get frustrated with the generic 12 week programs that are out there because people jump on board and yes, you may see some changes, but they're not lasting changes. Unless you continue to repeat that program over and over again, you're, it's not going to be sustainable. Another tip is to use pictures or a tight shirt or even a tight pair of jeans to judge your progress. I'm not saying don't use the scale, but it depends on if you're stepping on that scale and it's totally destroying your day or making your day wonderful because of some numbers that pop up. Maybe you need to find another way to judge your progress. Stop letting the scale be your ultimate score taker. When I assess my clients, I consider their scale weight, their girth measurements, their strength, their speed, their flexibility, and most important, their thought process about their weight loss journey. Because if your mindset is not in the right place, you may be able to lose a weight, but you will not be able to keep it off. Another bonus tip is set a goal that has nothing to do with your weight. Do a 5K run or a walk. Do push-ups or pull-ups or maybe just walking longer distance. Increase your strength in everyday activities. I had a client who uh, worked with me and she had trouble lifting up her windows to clean them when she went down the shore each year. And after working with me, the next year she, was, she came back to me and she was like, oh my gosh, those windows were so easy to push up, they were effortless. So it doesn't have to be like some big thing. Fitness isn't just about looking good although it is a pleasant byproduct, but fitness is about being able to do your daily activities with ease. It's about, at least in my mind, being 90 years old and working my way up there and not needing someone to wipe the drool from my face or to help me into the bathroom. Independence as you age is priceless. So do not give away your power to your scale. I hope these tips were very helpful to you. If you have a friend who has scale drama, maybe forward this podcast to them. <laughs> all right, that's all for me today, and I will talk to you soon. Hey, if you're loving this podcast, I want to hear from you. Head over to the Apple Podcast and scroll all the way down at the bottom of the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Please write a review. I can't wait to see what you write. Once you're done with your review, head over to shapeitupfitness.com and find out how you can get started on losing the weight for the last time.